It's awful. I actually really dislike one of my aquariums. So if you guys don't know, I'm in my office. Uh, I work here, work from home, and I, I sit here at my desk. And I have a couple of aquariums here. I got my little mini pond here. I can just kind of turn and look at some fish from time to time during the day just to kind of have a nice little break from staring at my computer screens. And I've got some really nice fish. I've got some beautiful bettas here. I've made videos about these tanks before. But one of them I kind of hate, actually. I actually really dislike the way that the tank is set up. I dislike that it's always growing algae. And I was also recently inspired by some posts that I've seen online. So I think it's time for me to make a change. Instead of me kind of neglecting the tank and hating it, I'm embarrassed by it, to be honest with you. I don't even want to show you guys what it looks like now. There's hair algae all over the place. It is a disaster. So instead of, uh, you know, crying about it, we're going to fix it. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go shop for some supplies downstairs in the fish room. I'm going to rob some things from some of my other aquariums, some rocks, some plants, and we're going to do a little rescape on this tank and make it look better. Okay, so I'm down here in the fish room, obviously, and I am going to take some items out of some of my aquariums to use them as a hardscape and plants, etc., for the beta tank upstairs in my office. So uh, a couple of reasons why. One, I already have this stuff. I've got lots of rocks and pieces of wood and stuff all over the place. Lots of plants. So I might even go to my planted tank in the living room upstairs and uh, grab some plants out of there. Um, but also, you know, there is still a pandemic going on and I'm trying trying to limit my time outside of the house as much as possible, um, especially over the next few weeks until uh, things uh, lighten up a little bit. So anyway, fortunately for me, I do have all this re all these resources available so that I can uh, do a little shopping within my own home. So we're going to go ahead and go into this uh, 40 breeder down here that's gone through a few iterations recently. I'm gonna pull out some rocks. I think I'm gonna pull some rocks out of the Oscar and um, Silver Dollar tank, and maybe some other little uh, little bits and pieces around here. So um, we'll uh, go ahead and uh, do a little hunting now. So downstairs we got some rocks, some other stuff. In here, this is my planet tank, and I, this is a tank that has a CO2 injection, so everything grows very fast, very well in here. So I'm gonna take some clippings and some little plants from here, some Anubias, some Java fern, just some real easy stuff, and we'll use those plants. Okay, so we got some rocks. I've got all my rocks set up here. Um, I have a couple pieces of uh, uh, manzanita that I'm gonna use, and there are some in the tank already. Um, I've got some plants here that we pulled from another aquarium. So I've got uh, Crips in here, Crip Wendedi, some Anubias, a couple types of Anubias, and I have some Java Fern. So we're going to use all of that in this tank. Um, but now I've got to drain the water, catch the fish, obviously, if I'll put the fish in my uh, Nerite sail in the water, and uh, do a big water change, and um, start cleaning up. Well, I figured we should start with looking at how it looks right now. It's not good at all. It looks terrible. The algae, we've talked about this, the decor, terrible. I do love this little guy down here. This is my uh, red dragon betta that I got from Katie Tropicals, John and Lisa. Love this little guy. So first step is um, just kind of getting everything ready by removing the betta and the snail, uh, putting them in some tank water. So I do have a, a little uh, small container with some tank water that I'm going to be uh, putting the betta and the snail in. Um, so a pretty easy process uh, with the betta. They're super easy to catch, obviously, especially the kind of the fancy ones. 
Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, remove the water, remove the decor, um, remove the sponge filter, remove um, kind of all the stuff that's in there. Um, one thing that I do want to point out is it is important to make sure that you turn off or unplug your heater. So if you have a heater in an aquarium and you're doing this, you need to make sure that it is unplugged um, as it will break and, and uh, could um, harm um, some things if uh, it stays plugged in. So um, anyway, so yeah, just kind of doing a, a water change, uh, multiple water changes. So I would drain, refill, drain, refill. Um, as I was cleaning, scooping out duckweed, scooping out, you know, plant matter, detritus, etc. And um, uh, just making sure that it was uh, looking nice and clean compared to how it used to look. And then the next step from here is starting to uh, do the decoration. So starting off by putting down a little bit of a mat um, on the surface of the glass uh, for the rocks. I, I'll talk about this a little bit later in the video. Um, so doing that kind of as a base for the rocks and then um, just getting the rocks and kind of putting them in, in uh, different places just to kind of figure out how I want it, the rocks and the manzanita. I kind of struggled with this bit for a while, so you don't see see it here in the footage, but was kind of messing around with it before I finally you know, chose this pattern um, and still was kind of moving the rock around a little bit and then started planting the plants. So planted the Anubias in the uh, foreground and the Java fern in the background, um, kind of all around. Eventually, I hope that these will kind of grow up and maybe even grow out of the water a little bit. That would be kind of a nice effect um, as the rock also does protrude from the water uh, surface, kind of like an island. And then refill, obviously dechlorinating uh, with your uh, preferred dechlorinator. I use uh, Fritz Complete and uh, put your inhabitants back in. Um, it is important to note also that the sponge filter is cycled. It's the same sponge filter. I just removed it when I was doing the water change and put it in a uh, container of tank water. And so here it is, it's done. And this is what it looked like before. Again, so dreadful, dreadfully terrible. Um, every adjective you can think of. And the result is much, much better. I do really like it. It's actually better than I thought. Um, I'm not great at aquascaping, but uh, I think that I did a pretty good job and it's much better than before. And here we have the beta enjoying his new environment. Well, it wasn't too bad. Uh, kind of the cleanup was a lot of work getting getting rid of all the duckweed and everything. Um, I'm actually pretty pleased with how it came out. It's actually better than I thought it would look um, with just me finding some stuff in some random tanks. Um, the last step is moving the light. So right now, this is a rimless light and we have it uh, kind of clipped on here to the rim of the aquarium. Um, because I have this kind of island style, I don't like it so close. So I'm going to raise it up by using some Velcro, some uh, 3M double stick Velcro here. And we're going to attach it to the underside of the shelf here so that it's up above and just shining down on the tank.
Well, it's all done. All that we have to do now is just let it clear. Um, I did take some footage, but the water's still a little bit cloudy from doing all those water changes. So I will um, let, let it settle overnight and uh, we'll get some footage tomorrow. But uh, anyway, overall, I think it went pretty well. Um, I'm very pleased with how it looks. Um, a couple things I did want to mention is I did use a fertilizer in there. So I did use the aquarium co-op fertilizer for um, the uh, Anubius and the Java fern. And then I did put uh, some root tabs um, in the substrate by the uh, by the uh, crypts just to give them a little bit of a jump start since they were transplanted. So hopefully they do well. The idea with the crypts is to kind of let them grow a little bit in the background. I know that crypts are usually a foreground plant, but this is such a small aquarium that I use them as a background plant. And um, I put them in front of the little mini heater and my little mini sponge filter that I have in there so that they can eventually grow a little bit and uh, maybe camouflage or hide the sponge filter and the heater. Um, and then also kind of add a little bit of cover as well. Um, right now the bed is a little bit shy because I basically disrupted his entire world. So he's been kind of hiding. When I've left the room, I find him swimming out. And when I come back in, he kind of darts back in, which is not characteristic of him. Usually he swims out when I'm, when I'm around because he thinks he's gonna get fed. So anyway, otherwise everything is uh, going well. Um, you might have noticed uh, in the footage that there's a little bit of a, like a mat uh, or a screen on top of the sponge filter. And that's because it's an open top aquarium. And um, as the bubbles rise, they hit the surface and they burst and then you get a little bit of a splash. Um, there's nothing that it can harm as far as like the lights or anything. Um, but I don't want like a bunch of overspray getting on this on the bookshelf or anything like that or having additional evaporation. So I put um, this little thing, it's probably can't see it because it's like see through, but it's a um, it's a little mesh that uh, people use for knitting. You buy these at the craft store. They're great. Like they come in these sheets where you can use them as like tank dividers and stuff like that. But I actually uh, just made a little square or rectangle and put it on top there so that when the bubbles burst, they just kind of hit that and fall back down so they don't come out of the tank. Um, I also had a larger piece of this as well that I used on the very bottom underneath the rocks just because um, even though those rocks are very smooth um, and there's not a ton of them, um, I still wanted a little bit of something between the rocks and the glass or the substrate. So the rocks are sitting directly on this and then also um, uh, there's additional substrate around it. So anyway, that is the video. Hopefully you like it. Hopefully you like how it turned out. I am very happy. And because these two aquariums plus my little mini pond are the ones that I look at more than any other aquarium, I really wanted it to look better. So anyway, that's all I have for now. Comment down below what you think of my upgraded beta tank. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to this channel. That's all I had for now. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.